What's up, pen pals? This is Tom with Gold Spot Pens. I have with me a very special guest for a very special occasion. This is Mr. Penboy Roy, and we are going to talk to you about a very special pen that is the brainchild of Mr. Penboy Roy and a collaboration with one of our esteemed manufacturers in Narwhal Pens. I'm going to refer to them as Narwhal Pens because Roy likes Narwhal better than their name change to Nar Novelor. Tell us a little bit about this pen, Mr. Penboy Roy. Okay, so this is the Narwhal Pentertainment exclusive fountain pen. I actually had every hand in designing it. And I'm not saying that as a joke. I know I like to create, take credit for all your good ideas, but this one was actually my good idea because I do like the combination of red. I like the combination of black, silver, and I also like the idea of diamond dust in the acrylic in which our good friend Tim McKenzie is very good at making. So what I did is I sat down with Frank from Narwhal. I'm gonna keep calling it Narwhal because I can't spell Novelor. I only learned how to say it correctly, what, two weeks ago. It's been around for like just, four Just months. now. Right, just now. right. So I rehearsed it. It for does say Novelor on the box, but don't be fooled. It's still Narwhal. I'm, well, actually, the deal we worked out is we're literally going to cross it out in magic marker and just write Narwhal, just for the no, sake I'm of not, simplicity. I'm not doing it. <laughs> this pen has so many inspirations. Not only is it the colors of the Penboy Roy Pentertainment channel, but it also reminds me of many things. The first one is what the odd oink was referring to as liquid hot magma. Hot magma. Liquid hot magma. And this is obviously a reference to a, I think one of the greatest movies ever created in the history of film. Oh yes, Austin, classic cinema. <laughs> Austin classic Powers. Classic 90s cinema. I also th wanted to call it the Necromorph Edition because if you look at the pen, the colors remind me of a splattered Necromorph mm. from the new hit game, Dead Space. Designed. Now, see, I thought that was a little too close. You know, calling it Necromorph would be like a copyrighted property. That, right. It, yes. I do agree with that, but if I had my way, I would call it the Necromorph edition because it does look like Necromorph splatter. Well, also, too, it has connotations of some pretty gruesome, you know, gory stuff. Whereas if you just call it liquid hot magma, it just, you think of the natural right. and fire you can't and patent lava. Liquid hot no, magma. You can't. Right? So we're going to call it the LHM edition, mm -hmm. Penter to the Narwhal Pentertainment exclusive LHM edition fountain pen. Now let's take it out of the box. Do we have it here in the box? Is it in the box? Or? I should hope so. They make these boxes really tight. So it comes in this square shaped gift box. Okay. It has Narwhal Nautilus written in the top. It says whatever this wants to say. It says nar Narwhal. So if you can take a close look over here, as I said before, it's a diamond cast acrylic that was mixed by Tim McKenzie. Now, I actually FaceTimed Frank and Tim McKenzie while they were doing the mix and looked at it, liked what I saw. In addition, I also asked them to make sure, asked the manufacturer to make sure that the trim matches the aesthetic of the pen. So I wanted red nib, red center band, red clip. I think this is an excellent looking pen. I think it's gorgeous in its own macabre type way. I think it looks super unique. Like I don't know of many pens that have, first of all, red trim. That, you know, Diamond Cast is fairly out there in terms of a material. A lot of pens are made out of diamond cast these days, but in this particular blend of colors, it's very unique. And on top of that, all it being put both together in that context, it just looks real super, super cool. Right. Very, very cool. There's not much in terms of translucency in this pen, but I do love the mix of colors, the sparkle. I think it's a very unique pen. I don't think there's anything that looks much like it in terms of the mix of colors, the yeah. diamond cast sparkliness. And it just, it just really has a lot of shimmer and there's some really nice moments that you look at through the grip. Like there's this one big smear of red that's here and they're of course gonna all look different, but it just like a, a volcanic eruption, there's just gonna be a lot of uniqueness about how this pen looks and how your individual pen looks. I think we even have, so I could show you too, is that this is another one 
um, that I have, just to, to show the variation of how different the pens could be. Um, this one has some, I'd say maybe a little bit more gray swirls that are going through it. Still looks as diamond uh, blingy as the, as the other ones do, but just sometimes they have a little bit more red, some of them have a little bit more black, some of them have a little bit more gray. So it does vary quite significantly. Like this one's got a ton of silver throughout the grip that's here, but it, then it's gone on the other side. So if you saw it from one angle, you'd be like, oh, well, and then you turn it and it's got a lot of gray in it. So it's, it, it is very dynamic. It's unique looking and the red trim really ties it all together. I have to go out on a limb and say, and I'm, I'm pretty sure you'll agree with me on this one, this is probably the best looking Nautilus that exists. As a matter of fact, I think some would argue that it's the greatest and best pen ever created in the history of anything ever created I don't know, you ever. Use that, use that label a lot about Shh. the greatest things that, no. Shh. Just say yes. Yes, it is. Yeah, the greatest and best pen ever created in the history of anything ever but created. But I will share from personal experience because I had a, a heavy hand in making the Primary Macchiato, which was an addition that was done with the Jonathan Brooks material, mm -hmm. which was all brown and had the coffee-like swirls on it. So, you know, I, I, and that was a pen that I purchased and use regularly myself and have been enjoying using since, it's been about like a year and a half or so since that pen was introduced. Um, so, you know, I, I, I feel what you're feeling and I, I tend to do this a lot more often, but you know, I'm just, I, you know, it's, it's good to know that we have now a very similar experience about putting this pen out into the world and, you know, coming up with something creative and letting other people in on this and sharing it with other people. Like, you know, how do you feel knowing that people will be using the Liquid Hot Magma Pentertainment Podcast pen, and that's your creation. That's something that didn't exist before. We'll have to see, mm -hmm. because I think it's a gorgeous pen. I think it's really cool with its red trim, the red nib, I think it writes really well. As a matter of fact, you think so too, because I remember when we were texting about it, you said this pen is gorgeous. Yeah. I was a lot more excited about seeing this pen than I was looking at the the pod, the, not the podcast t-shirts, the, uh, the pen board Roy t-shirts that <laughs> arrived at my house and then I had no choice but then to sit on for most part. And you know, this is, this is a, this is a, uh, a collaboration that uh, I think has, is, go, is going to be enjoyed by many people that are in the pen community. And I think even outside too, because I could foresee a lot of people getting into this pen who let's say, you know, maybe that they've gotten some limited experience, like maybe you penabled them with some uh, preppies or something, you, you kind of got them going there, but then like this is gonna be like the pen for them. I think that this is an excellent pen. It's gonna be an excellent addition to your collection. If you don't have any diamond cast material, this should be your first one. And if you do have diamond cast material, this one will be your most, most recent. So make sure that you <laughs> pick this one up it's exclusively sold at Goldspot, my sponsor for the Pentertainment Podcast, and I'm glad that Goldspot is willing to step up and handle the logistics on this thing because I'm not. <laughs> Talking about the price, this price is, has an MSRP of $150. It is available at Goldspot Pens. You can also look at the affiliate link in the description below. Click on that and you can make your purchase. Now there's only 100 of these available. 99 because one went to me. 98 because one is actually going out to someone else. Did I tell you who it's going out to? No. Okay, one of these pens is going out to my very good friend, Serata, who is a game developer at EA Games. Her, her and her team is responsible for the game Dead Space, a new hit game that's out that I really enjoy, scary. Necro, and whatever And in that, that game, you just necromorphs exist, yeah. and when you stomp on the corpses of the necromorphs. It looks like this stuff splattered all over the interior of a ship called the Ishimura. Excellent game. And I think because of that, I think she deserves one. She was also talking to me about getting a pen to celebrate the completion and the successful launch of Dead Space. And I feel like even though she has no idea, I think one is going to her as a congratulatory gift. The Nautilus is not a pen that you could post. So it's a it's an unpostable uh, cylindrical body pen. And it has a number six size stainless steel nib, which is red PVD coated so that it matches with the rest of the, tr of the trim. 
Um, it is a number six, but it's not Yovo. It's actually made in-house by Narwhal. But you can unscrew it from the grip section and you could, let's say, then clean out the inside of the pen because you can then access the inside of the barrel here or you know, swap it out with, let's say, another Narwhal nib. However, despite the fact this is not Yovo number six, you actually can then pull out the nib and feed and you could replace the nib itself with a number six Yovo uh, nib if you so please. But why would you do that when you have the benefit of having your first red nib that matches its red furniture? That, yeah, exactly. So, so, I mean, this is pretty much meant, this is fitted for this pen. Um, then the other element that you will notice is that the diamond cast is broken up here by an ink window. So this is a clear ink window of which you could see the level of ink as it is in the fountain pen here. Um, you won't be able to see when I turn the piston mechanism, you won't be able to see the piston operate inside there because this is just right at the very, very end of where the barrel is. So uh, the piston only goes all the way up to where the material ends right here, um, which then kind of gives it a little bit of a gap. So you will see the ink come up when you draw the ink up through the bottle, you'd be able to see the ink in the window and you'd be able to see it pretty much coat this section here up until you get to the very end of your fill. And when you don't see any more ink or you see just a very light coating of ink in this window, then you know, it's gonna be time to have to swap out the ink or clean out the pen. Like I mentioned, it's a piston filling mechanism, so it only takes bottled ink. So what what colors do you think may, I mean, obviously a red would go awesome with this, but I mean, you I'm, could go with a lot of different I'm things, pretty boring, so I would go with a black. You would go with a black, right? Um, even like wrong. a gray. I mean, shimmer inks could be an option here because it does have a glistening uh, look about the pen. Um, but you could go with, I think, anything in the red family, uh, the black or silver grays, I think would look pretty nice in this too. Or you don't have to match it if you don't want to. But since there's so much matchiness going on with the pen, I would also probably put in a matching ink, um, of which a business appropriate black, I think would be, that's your up your alley mm -hmm. right there. That's really the technical aspects of the pen. Mm -hmm. um, it is available in fine, medium, broad, and double broad. You have a good range to go with there. Um, Narwhal tends to run, I think, a little bit on the broader side than you know usual Yovo nibs. I don't think it's broader, I think it's just wetter. It's just a little wetter. Yeah, so I feel like because it's wetter, it makes it seem broader. It'll give but, you a, a thicker line. Right, but so because it's more wetter. You do get a lot of pooling in the mm -hmm. ink, which is nice, if, especially if you like the, the different types of Cooling, sheening, the shading, too. shading, and everything yeah. like that. So I think this is a. I think you're really going to enjoy this pen. I think so too. I think it's gorgeous. Not just saying it because I'm biased and we're selling the pen. I think you're going to enjoy it because I've been enjoying my primary macchiato. I've been enjoying it a lot mm -hmm. for the last year or so that I've been using it. And um, even though I am a notorious poster of caps, I can. I not that I can deal or tolerate with it, but I like it because it is, writes really well without the cap on. It just feels very balanced and has enough weight without the, without the, the cap posted on the back. It writes very smoothly. It's a little bit, I would say it's a little bit smoother than you would expect a, a Yovo or a Schmidt nib. I, I feel like it's a little bit smoother of a writing experience. Um, a lot of people feel that uh, Narwhal nibs are really nice right out of the box, that they work pretty well, and piston mechanism's really nice and smooth. It is limited edition, so you'd see the number on the very top of the cap finial there, and it's out of 100 pieces. And it's kind of weird how they do it, but it's unique as well, is that usually you would see like the edition number first and then the total edition number, but here they have the, the total edition number 100 is over the edition number of the pen, which is kind of, she feels a little backwards, but that's just the way that they do it. So that is your baby, Roy. This is, this is, I'm, I'm excited and at the same time, a little bit nervous to see how people react to it because it's the first thing that I think Goldspot's ever offered that was entirely my creation. So it could either sell really well and make me feel really happy or it could not sell like my t-shirts and then make me feel like I invested in more t-shirts. Well, that is that is the thing, isn't it? It's mm -hmm. We never know until the rubber meets the road, so to speak. So. I think that people are going to look at this and they're going to see something unique and they're going to enjoy it. 
I hope so. I do too. I hope so. Please let us know in the comments, how do you feel about the Pen Board Roy or the, or the Pentertainment Podcast uh, liquid hot magma slash dead space uh, necromorph. <laughs> necromorph. All right, slash... let's, let, let's simplify it. It's going to be the Pentertainment exclusive liquid hot magma narwhal. Mm -hmm. Made of diamond cast, Tim McKenzie diamond cast Tim, material. Diamond, diamond cast Tim McKenzie. Yeah. Now, what's what I'm really proud of is the mixture. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't say to Tim McKenzie, let me see what mixtures you already have and I picked one of those. That's not how it worked. What, mm -hmm. how, the way it worked was I asked for a specific f mixture. He made it to my liking, and that's how we came up with this. And I couldn't be happier with it. I heard you were you were FaceTiming, right? You were yeah, FaceTiming face with Tim McKenzie, and no, you were no, no, actually no. telling him how to stir the the mixture, right? You were like you were like no 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 not clockwise. You right. go counter it has to, <laughs> right. clockwise. It has to go counterclockwise slower. <laughs> no, now no. fast. Now slower. No more diamond. I more actually, diamond. I actually FaceTimed Frank while he was with Tim McKenzie, and okay. Tim McKenzie was actually a funny guy too. Mm -hmm. he looks like he's he looks like he's definitely one of those dudes you can just hang out with and and just chat with all day. But he was showing me the mixture, mm -hmm. and he was showing me what he was doing, and I was very intrigued because the whole process seemed it, it's it's like watching a Michelin star chef create a dish. Mm -hmm. It starts from scratch, from nothing, from little ingredients, and you're like, how is that gonna turn into something fantastic? And it's like, I don't see it right now. All I just right. see it's just an assemblage I of just saw him stirring things. stuff in a foam cup. Yeah. And he was telling me that this is the colors that, he was asking me if these are the colors that you wanted. I'm like, yes, I want these colors. What I was really concerned about was pooling of colors. Like I didn't want the grays to be pulled on one side and then the blacks to be pulled on another side. I didn't want any separation. I was very clear about that. Okay. And I think he did a fantastic job in making so, sure that yeah. it's even and uniform throughout at the same time. Like you said, every pen is different, but it's, it's different enough that every pen is unique, but similar enough to be identifiable as the Pentertainment exclusive. Absolutely. Very gorgeous pen. It's almost like looking into a crimson universe like in the, space. The fiery heat of a star. It's like we're the, like the cosmos. Right. Yeah. Yes. It does look really cool. So pick up your Narwhal Pentertainment exclusive liquid hot magma edition. Hot magma. Hot magma. Liquid hot magma today.